What do Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Shopping District, Walt Disney's parents, Apple and Pixar, and the current Walt Disney CEO rumor mill all have in common? It's this, the cool-headed monkey from Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar in Disney Springs. And if you want to skip straight to the recipe, you can check the chapter markers below because this is going to be a long one. I'm going to attempt to weave together a 100% true story that may be one of the best Disney imaginary stories that I've ever heard. Let's start with the bar where you can find this drink, the Cool Headed Monkey. And if you haven't put it together yet, the Cool Headed Monkey is a take on this scene from the Temple of Doom where Kate Capshaw is served some chilled monkey brains. But we're talking Disney after all, and we can't have monkey brains on the menu. So a little play on words, and we end up with the Cool Headed Monkey. The drink is served at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, which is a bar in Disney Springs in Disney World. Jock was an adventurous pilot who is briefly, just momentarily, featured in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Jock is the pilot who airlifts Indy out of the Peruvian jungle at the beginning of the film and is responsible for our first close-up encounter with Indiana Jones and snakes. I hate snakes, Jock! I hate them! Come on, show a little backbone, will ya? Jock Lindsay is not played by an actor, but it's played by Fred Sorensen, a pilot hired by Steven Spielberg and Frank Marshall to location scout for Raiders. They offered him the role, which was to be a quick cameo of sorts. Sorensen was born in the Panama Canal Zone, and his father was a naval pilot. He flew for Hawaiian Airlines for over 20 years, and it was during his time in Hawaii that he met Frank Marshall and was hired for Raiders. Now, this is the only time we see Fred Sorensen in a movie but it's not the only time contributing to the Spielberg-Lucas universe. In 1992, Spielberg is filming a low-budget art movie called Jurassic Park in Kauai. The catalyst for unleashing of these dinosaurs and the ensuing death and destruction in the subsequent five films is a tropical storm headed for the park. That and some sabotage by Newman. Uh -huh. As the real-life filming is taking place, a real hurricane, Hurricane Iniki, is headed towards Kauai. Spielberg, the crew, and the cast of over 100 are stuck on the island as the hurricane hits Kauai. Instead of staying and sheltering in the ballroom of the hotel, like everyone else, Spielberg and a small crew head to the beach to film shots of the hurricane, which you can see in Jurassic Park. It's the biggest disaster to ever hit the islands of Kauai, and the cast and crew are now stranded in a hotel with no water, no toilets, and no electricity. No commercial flights in or out of the island, but somehow, producer Kathleen Kennedy, that's the current head of Star Wars, Kathleen Kennedy, she's able to get a ride from the National Guard to Honolulu. In Honolulu, Kennedy charters a humanitarian flight through the Salvation Army to get aid and supplies to Kauai, and in return can get the cast and crew off of the island. And who do we imagine is flying the plane into Kauai to deliver needed supplies and rescue the cast and crew, it's Jock Lindsay himself, Mr. Fred Sorensen. So how does an obscure character whose screen time accounts for about a minute go on to have his very own bar at the renovated Disney Springs shopping district? There's more to this story. First, Jock Lindsay does appear in the indie comics, Indiana Jones and the Tomb of the Gods and the further adventures, Indiana Jones. So he becomes a well-known character to the hardcore, diehard indie fans. The addition of Jock Lindsay's hangar bar to the Walt Disney World Resort is a result of the renovation and expansion of the overall downtown Disney area in Florida, which had been a confusing shopping district and was all rebranded to Disney Springs. Now the name Disney Springs seems like a strangely placed name, but like all things Disney, there's an elaborate imaginary backstory, even to a mall. The idea is that Disney renovated a historic town called the Springs that is based on fiction. But Walt Disney's parents did in real life get married in a nearby town in Florida. Imagineers use this tiny little detail as a starting point with the idea that when Walt was a child, his parents told him this story, which would inspire him to eventually purchase the Florida property that is now Walt Disney World. When the team charged with recreating Disney Springs had the idea of making an adventure type bar, they wanted it to be Indiana Jones based. But at the time when they were pitching this idea, Disney did not own Lucasfilm. They thought it would be impossible to license that for a bar. So the Imagineers pitched the idea of an adventure based bar to the Disney executive team. And the then chairman of parks, Tom Staggs, suggested using Jock Lindsay, which is exactly what the Imagineers were going for. 
Now, I heard this story as told by the lead Imagineer of the project, but right around this time, Disney buys Lucasfilm, and the timeline might be a little bit off here. So maybe, just maybe, Staggs knew of the upcoming ease of using any Lucas intellectual property. Tom Staggs is not just another executive either. In the early 2010s, he's tapped as Bob Iger's personal choice as successor. They're even close friends and families vacation together. But the fact that a Disney exec knows about Jock Lindsay is wild. Welcome to Disney's famous Jungle Cruise. My name's Tom. I'll be your guide today. You Disney nerds know that Staggs never replaced Iger. One rumor is that Kevin Feige, the creative head of Marvel, was growing frustrated by his boss at Marvel, Ike Perlmutter. This is the structure Disney inherits from their Marvel purchase, and Perlmutter is now one of the largest shareholders of Disney as well. Bob Iger steps in and tells Feige he no longer needs to report to Perlmutter, but to Iger directly. In return, Perlmutter turns the Disney board against Staggs, Iger's personal choice for next CEO. But Perlmutter can't do it alone, and he gets help from Lorraine Powell Jobs to turn against Staggs. She also has a massive position in Disney from the time Steve Jobs sold Pixar to Disney in return for stock. Those are just Disney rumors, but Disney rumors are fun. So Tom Staggs does not inherit the throne, but leaves the company ushering a dramatic string of events where we end up with this man, followed by this man again, and who's next? We do not know. But some speculate that it may be the return of Tom Staggs, which I think would be pretty cool. Iger eventually gets his revenge just very recently, when he returns and then lays off Perlmutter. This was like two months ago. And if all of that is true, that means it was Tom Staggs who pushed to have Jock Lindsay's in Disney Springs, and that is how we got ourselves this mug and the drink, The Cool Headed Monkey. I already know that some of you are asking, is this the real, accurate, cool-headed monkey recipe? And I wanna show you something. I've embarked on a little adventure of my own, and I believe I have found the original recipe for the cool-headed monkey. It's a, uh, it's just a prop and a light. It's a, uh, pages are empty. Is this the real recipe we're gonna make today I don't know, I'm making this up. There are no official recipes I've ever seen for this drink out there in the wild, and the ones I have seen are all a little bit different, and none of them match the Jock Lindsay's menu ingredients list. For this drink, you'll need lime juice, pineapple juice, watermelon syrup, which I made in a vacuum bag with one part watermelon to one part sugar. You'll also need an orange liqueur and rum. The exact ingredients for this one are hard to find and include star African rum and Vanderhum liqueur, which is a Mandarin liqueur made in South Africa, which is brandy based. I think you'll have an easier time finding these outside of the United States. And I'm gonna be subbing in Grand Marnier instead. And for star African rum, I don't know much about this, but they have a light and a seven years rum. They are both molasses rums. And I'm gonna sub in Equiano for this one. Jock Lindsay's also shakes the drink, but there's some good stuff going into this cocktail here, including pineapple juice. So I'm gonna build this in a drink mixer tin because it'll be just a little bit better that way. But if you don't have a drink mixer, just shake it. Start with one ounce of pineapple juice, one ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of our watermelon syrup, half an ounce of orange liqueur, and two and a half ounces of rum. I can almost guarantee they don't use two and a half ounces of rum, but because of the sweetness here, I think it will help. Add eight ounces of ice and flash blend or shake this for five seconds. Add some more ice to your cool headed monkey mug and open pour. This drink has no garnish, but if there was ever a drink that needed a specialty garnish, it would be this one. So we'll add some mint, and finally, a grenadine monkey brains ice cap. If 
you do search for this recipe online, you will see that recipes call for grenadine often and even bitters, but the menu does not include that. And when I dug a little deeper into this and the menu, they specifically called for lime juice, watermelon, and pineapple juice. So they left off the juice part of the watermelon, and that's why I decided on watermelon syrup. To achieve the red monkey brains, I just took some crushed ice and some Rose's grenadine and packed it into this little bowl because it was about the right size of the top of the bug, and that was it. Now the pictures I've seen of the drink all just have a straw, but in the artwork for the drink, there's kind of like a red top to it. I don't know if the drink's supposed to be red or not. Grenadine would accomplish that. The watermelon is not really enough to make it red, but the mug is brown anyways, so you're not really gonna see that. Let's taste it. Wow, that's really good. I'm a little bit shocked how much watermelon comes through. Just half an ounce of watermelon syrup. I was expecting it to be a lot more subdued and maybe a flavor you weren't gonna pick up. It's gonna be overpowered by the pineapple juice, the lime juice, and our orange liqueur. And I knew the drink was gonna be kind of okay because I thought all those ingredients were really good. I just didn't understand what kind of impact the watermelon syrup would have. And I have been recently kind of making all of my syrups in a vacuum bag, but you can use a Ziploc bag if you just get out as much air as possible. If you're using equal parts of a fruit to a sugar, you're gonna get a pretty close to a one-to-one -one simple syrup. Uh, I like doing it that way as opposed to adding heat. If you add heat to a melon product, uh, watermelon, cantaloupe, you're gonna really change the way that tastes and it's gonna taste bad. So the cold process way, I like the most. Uh, I did, I think, I can't remember, I added a little bit of citric acid to this. Two grams per 100 milliliters uh, just to help kind of preserve the color and ideally extend the shelf life. But yeah, big expectations for, I think, me making this video, but pretty low expectations on the drink that it surpassed. Uh, this is not just a drink that I would encourage someone to make because, oh, it's Indiana Jones, it's Disney-based. I think if you just enjoy watermelon, we're taking some pretty basic ingredients here, including your pineapple juice and your lime juice and your rum, and adding in watermelon. But this is something that I am just very pleasantly surprised by. If you're someone who really enjoys watermelon, make this watermelon syrup, make this drink or something like it, and it's gonna come through. And I think you're gonna have a drink that is a little bit new and different, but has those familiar tastes as well. And I'm just gonna say, this drink is great. I'm surprised, but maybe it shouldn't be. Disney, Jock Lindsay's, somebody. Do this, do this top to this. This drink needs a garnish or put mint in it or something. Make it look more like the chilled monkey brains that we see from Temple of Doom. That's my two cents. I bought this mug sometime last year, just waiting for June 30th, 2023 for the release of the Dial of Destiny. And here we are. All right, that's it for this one. I'm Derek, this is Make and Drink. This was the Cool Headed Monkey. If you liked the video, give it a like below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to, and otherwise, see you in the next video. I, I feel fine. I feel great. I'm very happy with uh, with uh, what we did, and uh, I'm glad it's over. <laughs>